Welcome to the Freedom Report. What I love about Austin Peterson is his love of the battle. He wants to fight. Austin was, of course, the rabble rouser, just to make sure I stayed Rothbardian. We live in a world fraught with danger, and there is a certain amount of danger that the public must endure in order to secure the blessings of liberty for economic freedom and personal liberty. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Austin Peterson here, and welcome back to the Freedom Report podcast. I am so excited to bring this show to you. It is the debut show of a new era in Freedom Report politics and news, because as you probably have heard this week, uh, I will be hosting my own five-day-a-week radio show. Uh, Very exciting. I have been sort of negotiating this contract for several weeks now. And I've been in talks, and uh, I finally decided that I was going to take the job. So, very good news, though. It means that the Freedom Report podcast will continue. Um, I can continue to do the Libertarian Republic and do my activism on the side, as long as it doesn't interfere with me uh, putting out, you know, what's geez, uh, three hours a day, five days a week. That's quite a lot of content, five times three. 15 hours of freedom fighting a week and fun and karaoke and laughs. Uh, That's what's going to be great about my new show. And, you know, a lot of people have been asking me, well, what's the show going to be called? Well, we haven't had a title yet. I've been playing around with some ideas and things like that. But I just want to say thank you so much to my listeners and especially my Patreon supporters of the Freedom Report podcast because you guys definitely help make that happen. Um, I... You know, I have some, I'm a glass case of emotions, uh, but I, I have so many people that I could thank personally, but you as a group, the listeners of this podcast help make this happen because having such a big audience demonstrated to the Zimmer network uh, that they think that I could really be big. They think that this could be the beginning of some really exciting big things for me personally. Um, and of course, I love to lift people up and to lift up the community and the liberty movement. So I'm looking at ways to advance the cause of freedom with this new show. But I know I've been arguing for years, guys, that some the problem with our ideas is that it's not sexy, right? Like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she may be not smart. Her ideas are really stupid, but she makes them look sexy. And as much as it pains me to say that, that's the truth. We need to get sexy, folks. And my show is going to be a sexy show. It's going to be an awesome show. It's going to be a fun show. It's going to be an informative show. Um, I'm going to be right in the heart of Missouri in Jefferson City. My show is going to be broadcast in the state capital of Missouri, which means that I'll have on the legislators. We're going to get to talk about the exciting bills that are going to be uh, put out there by some people who are some friends of mine that uh, that won their elections that are state reps. Uh, some of the people that you've heard me interview perhaps on when I fill in for Gary Nolan or when I'm filling in for Pete Mundo here in Kansas City. Some true freedom fighters here in Missouri. It's not like California. We've got a lot of good conservatives and libertarian Republicans in our legislature here, and I look forward to introducing them to you um, and to continuing this podcast as well, because people have said, well, will you, will you, you know, quit the podcast now that you have your radio show? I think that's probably not a good idea. I think we should continue to have these sort of raw and uncensored discussions amongst ourselves like this podcast has become. You know, the thing about the radio show is, you know, we'll have a lot of guests, you know, I'll have featured guests, going to have on Steffi Weffy, going to have on Dirk Deaton, and going to have on Ben Baker and all, you know, we're going to get, try and get Ben Shapiro on and Judge Napolitano on the radio show. But the thing about the Freedom Report podcast is this is, you know, stream of consciousness uh, on my behalf. This is what I offer to you mostly as a way for there not to be any sort of tension or, you know, any gotcha games or anything like that. We can just have a discussion about issues that I think are important issues. Um, I, I try, even though libertarianism is a niche, and that's that's what the Freedom Report podcast serves, it, it's, it tends to serve a niche, I try and keep my topics as universal as possible, um, you know, as relevant to the body politic as possible, so that it has universality, right? You want your podcast to be listened by people, and, um, you know, there's, goodness knows, there's not a whole lot of libertarians, so uh, it's it's good that we have this, but you know, they're just different approaches. You know, a podcast, this is much more intimate, right? The This is something for that you and I are experiencing alone together. You know, you're probably not listening to this podcast with someone, right? Whereas if you listen to a radio show, you might listen to that with people, right? A podcast is usually a more one-on-one kind of a thing. And I think you like that. I mean, 
I know I like it. So if you want to continue the Freedom Report podcast, nothing changes. You still get the Freedom Report podcast. The good news is, is now I have my own mainstream media show. Oh no, guys, the mainstream media. Well, if you're going to freak out because I use the MSM label, just remember I did used to work for Fox. Actually, I remember I was debating um, in uh, Pork Fest, Porcupine Festival up in New Hampshire. I was doing a skeptics versus conspiracists, conspiracy theorists debate. And um, I talked about I was praising Fox News, some of the fellow, my fellow employees at Fox News, which was a bad tactic for the audience because it was all mostly anarchists and libertarians, and they hate Fox News. So it's like, you know, they were like, oh, ha, 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 though nobody there has any credibility. I'm like, yeah, there, there are some people who do, actually. But it doesn't matter. It's just, just giving you a little bit of glimpses into my life and experiences. Um, so you get the show five days a week. You get the radio show five days a week. You get uh, the Freedom Report podcast. You get the Libertarian Republic. And you know I'm, what I'm also kind of, kind of excited about, guys, is that I'm going to be able to make more libertarian stars. I'm going to be able to make more libertarian superstars. And I'm already starting to do that. I'm starting to see some new fresh faces that are popping up that are getting out there. You know, Squiggly Line Guy wrote an article today about how um, Steve Ir Irwin was attacked. You know, the crocodile hunter was being attacked by PETA because Google was celebrating the crocodile hunter. It was his birthday. Squiggly Line Guy, a.k.a. Guy Squigs, a.k.a. Squigs, wrote a piece about all the people who were making fun of PETA and getting Steve Irwin's back. And it was brilliant. So we're going to get Squiggly Line Guy on the show, on the radio show. And he, he's already popular because the stuff he writes is mostly brilliant. I would say it was, it's like 90% brilliant and then 10% very kitschy, like kind of, you know, uh, niche Japanese anime, you know, stuff. But, you know, that's, there's a world, there's a market for that. It's <laughs> uh, and, of course, Caleb. Uh, Caleb, been, uh, I, I pronounce his name wrong always. I say Shumate because it's, I don't know, another, maybe I'm kind of a weeaboo. Maybe I like Japanese-sounding names, but it's not, he's not Japanese-sounding. Shumate, he's corrected me on this before, and it's, it's not coming to mind. But I, it will come to mind because we'll get Caleb on the radio show. Uh, we're going to have Steffi Weffy on the radio show. We're going to have all the fun names and faces from the freedom movement on the show. Tom Woods. We'll get everybody on there. Blow it up. I, we're just going to have a blast, guys, because we'll, I'll get to give you the behind the scenes of what's going on with the show here on the podcast. So you get to hear, be a part of that. And our community is just going to grow. I think this is going to be a really powerful catalyst for the freedom movement. And God knows we need to be thinking about the future, guys. We need to be thinking about the future of liberty and what the liberty movement's going to look like. As a matter of fact, that's actually the topic of the speech that I'm going to be giving at Arizona State University on Monday, the 25th. Uh, and then, of course, I'm off to CPAC, which is going to be wild. I've got so much exciting, uh, I've got so many exciting things happening right now, folks, that. Yeah, and I got to find a place to live out in the country. Going to the country, going to eat a lot of peaches. Mid-Missouri is kind of the country. It is very rural. Um, and for trying to find some housing out there, man, if you think it's hard in New York City or Washington, D.C., go try and find a place somewhere rural, man. It's like, oh, here's this empty lot, you know. Build a home. <laughs> well, you know, I spent all my life in journalism. I never learned how to how to build a home. But you know, I've been talking to my dad about uh, about uh, you know getting some land and stuff like that. And my dad is he's an interesting character and stuff because he never tells me not to do things right, but he always kind of like questions right, has me question, you know. And we're just talking about. He's like, well, you know, you're gonna have to like mow the lawn and do all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I kind of think I want to do that, right? I feel like it will build character. Um, you know, I was thinking today about what is a rube. I'm most certainly, I consider myself not a rube, but it's all relative if I was a rube compared to, I'm a rube compared to people, uh, the cosmopolitan elites, the coastal elites. Uh, but, um, but then, of course, that's relative when you're out here in the Midwest. Here, I'm, I'm a coastal elite, right, because I spent 11 years in New York and D.C. Uh, so it's, it's, it's going to be fun to get out there and get rural again, um, you know, trying to avoid apartment living. So tired of it. Ready to have my own plot of land and, uh, you know, enter the promised land. You know, it's radio is it's funny. They say video killed the radio star, but radio is a, you know, conservative dominated. You know, it's a great market for people like myself, someone for myself to enter into. I think it's the right career path. Uh, I think that it's going to merge everything that I love, which is entertainment and politics and news uh, and a platform to speak out on important issues. It's going to give, give me all of those things. Um, and 
I just am really grateful to the Zimmer Radio Network for acknowledging my talent. Um, it's about damn time I got my own show. What do you think, guys? Uh, anyways, I don't want to drone on and on about myself too long, but uh, we do certainly get to do to spike the football in the end zone here because for some of you who have been listening to the Freedom Report podcast, and I know some of you have been listening since like 2013. For some of you, I mean, we all, like, I remember at the beginning of the podcast, people were like, oh, you need your own show. Austin, I would go on TV. Oh, you need your own show. Well, we did it, guys. And I'm grateful to you for being a listener, for being a supporter, for being a follower. I, I understand that, you know, my talent only goes so far. My hard work only goes so far because without you guys, like, nobody would, if you weren't listening, that'd be it, right? Anyways, so let's talk about the news, guys. Uh, hilarious story. Hilarious story. Uh, the Sunrise Movement b- took a bunch of brainwashed kids and went and played them. Uh, I'm going to play this clip for you. It's in, in, in its entirety. It's about two and a half minutes. Uh, but the Sunrise Movement uh, is supporting the Green New Deal. They brainwashed a bunch of kids. They were harassing Senator Dianne Feinstein. Dianne Feinstein, she, she stiff-armed these kids. And I got to say, you know, everybody can take the moral high ground and say, oh, well, you know, I don't like kids being used political props. I think everybody can agree that it's wrong. Nobody's going to stop doing it. You know, it, they're just going to keep doing it because they do, they use they're going to use kids for political props the same way they do when there's dead kids in school shootings to take away guns. It's just too easy. Oh, it's a child. But Senator Feinstein, man, it, for for. for for the first time in my entire life, we're seeing conservatives saying, what the F? I love Dianne Feinstein now. Mike Cernovich tweeted that. Uh, ben Shapiro tweeted that. Listen to this res- Listen to this in- engagement between Dianne Feinstein and these kids, and we'll talk about it after the jump. Can I go in and share this letter? And we're going to do it all together. Yeah. Share it in front of Feinstein. If we're asking her to vote on yes on, on the Green New Deal. deal. We are trying to ask you to vote yes on the Green New Deal. Oh, please. Okay, I'll tell you what. We have our own Green New Deal. Some scientists have said that we have 12 years to turn this around. Well, it's not going to get turned around in 10 years. What we can do Senator, if is this put doesn't get turned around in 10 years, you're looking at the faces of the people who are going to be living with these yes, consequences. Right. The government and is supposed to be for the people and by the people and all you know what's people. interesting about this group is I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. You come in here and you say it has to be my way or the highway. I don't respond to that. I've gotten elected. I just ran. I was elected by almost a million vote plurality. And I know what I'm doing. So, you know, maybe people should listen a little bit. I hear what you're saying, but we're the people who voted you. You're supposed to listen to us. That's your job. How old are you? I'm 16. I can't vote. You didn't vote for me. Well, she she voted. It doesn't matter. We're the ones who are going to be impacted. It doesn't matter. We're going to be the ones who are impacted. I understand that. I have seven grandchildren. I understand it very well. Senator, the cost of not taking this action is far higher than the cost of what the Green New Deal will be. And there is enormous popularity for this bill around the whole country. And we're asking you to be brave and do this for us and for your grandchildren. I'm trying to do the best I can, which was to write a responsible resolution. Any plan that that doesn't take bold, transformative action is not going to be what we need. Well, you know better than I do. So I think one day you should run for the Senate. Great. And then you do it your way. But by that time, in the meantime, by that time, there's going to be a big problem. I just won a big election. I feel terrible for those kids because it's wrong to terrorize children. Tell them, uh, oh, we're all going to die in 12 years. I mean, it's bad enough that we have Akaja Cortez fear-mongering and terrorizing all of us, these Green New Deal uh, thought terrorists, mental terrorists. Uh, They are fear-mongers, and they're doing it to us as adults, and adults are believing it. But then, of course, you take impressionable impressionable kids, and they're like, oh, what do you mean 10, 12 years? You mean I'm never going to grow up? You mean I'm going to die? We're all going to die if they they don't do this? And then you put her in front of a U.S. senator, Dianne Feinstein. I mean, points to Feinstein for stiff-arming and pushing them back, stupid kids. You know, if you're going to brainwash children like that and put them up 
there like that. You cannot expect them to be shielded for the fact that they're kids. You cannot expect that the, what the kids do and say cannot be criticized. They, it can. It's like David Hogg going out there and being totally stupid. When you're going for our rights, when you're reaching into our pocketbooks and you're using kids to do so, we have the right to criticize what comes out of those kids' mouths. And we have the right to criticize what the parents are doing because I think their parents are effing evil. I think their parents are evil to scare the crap out of their kids like that and to put them in a situation that they have no comp contemplation. They've never considered what, what it takes, one, to pass legislation. They, they've never had to vote. That was another thing that Diane Feinstein did. She was like, oh, she just called out this one uh, kid who was 16 years old or saying, we voted for you. She's like, how old are you, 16? You didn't vote for me. Boom! And like, you know, a couple of butthurt liberals. One is uh, this guy named Mehdi Hassan. I find it hard to believe that this isn't an SNL or The Onion sketch. Did Senator Dianne Feinstein really speak like that to a bunch of kids? Yeah, I know what I'm doing and you didn't vote for me. Are you freaking kidding me? Beyond parody. Watch the video, Mehdi Hassan says. Uh, and uh, Mike Cernovich says, of course, uh, I love Feinstein, right? But Walid Shahid, former staffer for Bernie Sanders, says that Feinstein needs to do some soul searching. After the way she treated those children from Sunrise Movement, Feinstein should maybe do some soul searching and reflect on if she can genuinely represent Represent the people of California or not. She's too conservative for California. What? <laughs> Senator Diane Feinstein, the one who sweeps rooms with, with fingers on the triggers of rifles as, and points it at, at people in an audience at press conferences. She's too conservative for California. I agree. I think that she is. I think Diane, the left has gone so far left that Diane Feinstein's looking like George W. Bush. <laughs> Oh, what a world, what a world we live in. I don't have time to sit down and break down all the reasons why socialism doesn't work. But if you want to hear more about it, you might want to tune into my live stream at the Arizona State University Future of Liberty talk that I'm giving on Monday night. It's going to be fun and it's going to be warm. God, it's so cold here. It's pouring rain all day today. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Get me out of here. I'm going out to the Southwest and then to the frigid mid-Atlantic for CPAC. Will I see you there? Hope so. Lots of exciting things. Thanks so much. Love you guys.